<laughs> no. Is that pest for humour in Australia? <laughs> <laughs> Do you all see my hat? That's psychological. Huh? My head does not go to the top. But it is your natural assumption that it does. In your mind, I am now taller and arguably more fierce than I really am. But check this out. Uh, <laughs> the Australians. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look at the copies, think of the hat. <laughs> this is going to be very important for you in a few years, fella. <laughs> I wish someone had explained it to me when I was your age. <laughs> Saved me a fortune and an awful lot of pain. <laughs> None of it worked. <laughs> right. Too much information. Now I know that you ladies <laughs> have not come here to listen to some grumpy old soldier bang on about all this blood gore or indeed medieval defensive architecture or indeed complete. Um, you've come here for the crown jewels, haven't you, ladies? The bling thing. And not because you're interested in their history. You're not. You just want to make the man you're with feel inadequate again. And you will. Under that clock, you will find a door, and when you go through it, you'll see the world's largest perfect foot diamond at 530 carats. Oh Don't compare God. your engagement ring <laughs> with the Star of Africa. You will also see what is largely regarded as the world's most beautiful diamond, the Koh or the light of India. We've stolen them from everywhere. <laughs> Although Her Majesty's government insists, I tell you, that they were given to us by grateful nations. <laughs> Usually at gunpoint. <laughs> yeah. Over there in the corner we have the Queen's House, built as a wedding present for Anne Boleyn. The work commenced on that in 1533, the year of the wedding, completed in 1541, five years after her execution. <laughs> it is now the home of the Constable of the Tower of London and his family, being guarded today by soldiers, I don't know if you can see him, oh, soldiers yeah. of the Scots Guards. There's another one over there. They're in their ceremonial bearskin helmets and red tunics today. Their heads don't go to the top either. Um, be advised that some of these young men have recently returned from combat operations in Afghanistan and some of them will shortly go back there. That weapon you see is live. It is the standard British Army rifle with bayonet. Do not upset the soldiers. You got that? Yeah. Good. Soldiers deserve your respect. Anyone with a rifle and bayonet deserves some respect. Especially if you don't have one. <laughs> that over there is tower green. It's colour coded. It's grass. I have to explain that because a lot of people spend an hour or so looking for a green tower. These people are European. <laughs> Europeans are nice enough people, I suppose, but they do have syntax problems and talk like Yoda. <laughs> so, tower green. Grass it is. <laughs> Well, it is Star Wars Day, isn't it? May the 4th be with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come on, that was funny. Oh, <laughs> yeah, you can... Yeah, it's OK, just leave it, but it's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> Over there, you can visit the Beecham Tower. Beecham, that arch window there lets light into a chamber haunted by a little girl in a pink top with white sleeves. <laughs> guidelines we have for the tower, I have to tell you that that is not a ghost. Right? Just a little girl. <laughs> Ghosts don't exist, children. They're like the tooth fairy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Look, look, parents, I'm saving you a few, Bobby. If, if you want to know about the tooth fairy, next time your teeth fall out, just put them under your pillow. Don't tell mum or dad. <laughs> yeah. Saving you a few bob there, parents. Now. <laughs> well, kids, if you want to do it, tell mum and dad. But don't be on the yeah, I know. Okay, right. Yeah. Very well. I can't go further. <laughs> yeah. She's still now. I'm a big guy. Right. Now then. This is a very shocking realization. The walls of that chamber are covered with graffiti. Some of that graffiti is nearly 500 years old and was left here by the prisoners. Graffiti is not a new problem. Modern art is a new problem. <laughs> Over there in the middle of Tower Green is a monstrosity of perspex, granite and tubular steel, which for some reason attracts children from all over the world to sit on it. That is a monument to traitors and mutineers.
is. It should not exist. Traitors and mutineers deserve no monuments. There are no crimes worse than treason or mutiny. That is a personal opinion. That is the site of the private execution scaffold. It was there that Henry VIII had two of his wives beheaded, and many husbands take their wives back to admire the spot. <laughs> first of these was, of course, Queen Anne Boleyn, Henry VIII's second wife. His first wife was Catherine of Aragon, a Spaniard. They were happily married for 17 years, actually married for 23 years. The last six years were blighted by the fact that she could not produce a son. She'd given him a daughter, but that wasn't good enough. It rarely is. <laughs> so he divorced her and married Anne Boleyn. Like Catherine, she gave him a daughter, but could not give him a son. So she did try hard, really hard, and not just with Henry. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't care what your romantic, sentimental notions might be about the myth of Anne Boleyn. I don't want to know if you were Anne Boleyn in some previous incarnation. <laughs> On average, I meet three of you a year. You can't all be right. You're not special, you're sick. Delusional and barking mad. Get help. <laughs> Anne Boleyn should not be admired, copied or emulated in any way. She was found guilty by a court of adultery with seven men, including her brother. And when you're married to the king, that's treason. And I don't care who you're married to, it is a bit excessive and not a little weird. <laughs> not for her, the block and axe, though. Henry commanded that, that she would be allowed to go out French fashion with a two-handed sword. And on the 19th of May, 1536, as she knelt thereabouts praying for forgiveness, a Frenchman took off her head with one stroke of that sword. Marvellous. She didn't know she was dead. <laughs> the public record for her execution tells us that when her severed head was lifted from the straw, the select audience gasped in amazement and horror and several people fainted because her eyes continued to move around the faces in the crowd and for quite some time, whilst her neck dripped blood, her lips continued to move. But isn't that just like a woman? You know, last word, last word, last word, last word. They don't know when to shiver. You'd think she'd get the hint by now, but no. She was so convinced she was going to get a reprieve, no arrangement had been made for a funeral, and there was no coffee. Anne Boleyn, Queen of England, obviously, quite a bit shorter now, uh, has been stuffed into a humble arrow box. And that arrow box lies inside that chapel. But she's in good company. In there with her, Queen Catherine Howard, Henry's fifth wife, also guilty of adultery, and with her I have more sympathy. She was very young when she was forced to marry the king. Some academics say she might have been as young as 14. Most think she was 17. However, Henry was 50, morbidly obese, with ulcerating wounds on his legs which stank and would not heal, indicating diabetes. Now in those days that couldn't be treated. He had a selection of other diseases as well. The apothecary's notes, which still exist in the National Archive, tell us <laughs> that these diseases would have responded well to penicillin. <laughs> there is a suggestion that on the night of the wedding he was not up to the duties of a newlywed husband and that he was humbled in the act of love. That in his frustration he beat Catherine and that these beatings continued. That's no joke at all. There was no love in the marriage. She felt betrayed by her family. What's a girl to do? sought comfort outside, she had an affair, she got caught, she admitted her adultery, but there on the scaffold, in an incredibly gutsy statement, she proclaimed it. I die the Queen of England, she said, I am ready. Much rather would I have lived and died as the humble wife of the only man to have ever loved me, Thomas Culpepper. She probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Thomas Culpepper certainly thought so. <laughs> he was hanged, drawn and quartered oh, no. for his part in the affair, and Catherine Howard was beheaded. But Henry did something really sick. He had quicklime poured into a casket, which dissolved her body and turned it to sludge. Oh, in Tudor no. Christianity, that was a big deal. It was a tenet of the Tudor Christian faith that you needed a body in order to rise from the dead on the Day of Judgment. Henry VIII had therefore denied her an afterlife. He also denied God the ability to judge her. When the public found out about that, they were terrified. Your king is there for your protection. You should not be terrified of your king. <coughs> Henry VIII had become the tyrant that Sir Thomas More, who we spoke about right at the beginning, always said he would be. Saint Thomas More also lies inside that chapel. We're about to go in there. 
chapel is a place of Christian worship, so gentlemen, you will do what I do and remove your headdress before you go inside. If you have a mobile phone, you will switch it off. If it goes off inside the chapel, you will die. <laughs> Maybe not stay. But you will die. <laughs> there can be no photography inside the chapel, madam. Thank you for bringing that up. I'd almost forgotten. Yeah, there is to be no video or photography in.